Hey everyone, and welcome back to the next episode of Shadows of Brimstone. We're in the middle of a fight against some night terrors and void spiders. Right up ahead, we have an entrance, a portal to another world. So as soon as we finish this fight, we're going to go ahead and enter this other world to see what lies on the other side of this portal. Without further ado, let's start the turn with the holding back the darkness test. We need to roll 7 or higher. That's 9, so no issues holding back the darkness. Four spiders have initiative of 6, so they'll get to activate first. This spider is going to attack Chase. It gets to roll 2 combat dice. And we're looking for 4 or higher. So both of the attacks um, are hits. We got two hits going through. Let's roll for Chase's defense. His defense is four or higher. We've got one four. So one of the attacks was blocked. And this one goes through, which means Chase is taking two damage. That would bring him up to ten. But he should be still okay because his health is nineteen. The monster behind that spider is going to move up and attack Chase as well. Four or higher. One six. So one hit going through. We defend and we rolled a two. Therefore, Chase did not defend against that attack as well. And he's going to take two more wounds. This spider here is going to try to target a hero. So let's roll and see which random hero it would target. One, two, three, ch B, four, five, six, chase. And we rolled a one, so that would be B. So it's gonna go rip and attack B with two combat dice. Wow, double hits. All right, let's defend. We have defense of three or higher, so not bad in terms of defense. And there you go. Uh, B's really good at blocking off attacks. So she defended her guess, herself against both of those hits and uh, she's not taking any damage. Next up, we have B up in the initiative order. At the beginning of B's turn, she's going to take two horror hits because she's on the same map tile as a Night Terror. And she can do her willpower safe to see whether she can block off that horror hit. We need four or higher, and there you go, we're fine. So she's going to roll for her movement, which is going to be a two. Uh, she'll try to move. She, she'll try to move by first evading the spider, so doing the escape test, and she needs to roll four or higher to do escape. And unfortunately, she did not roll a four higher, so she did not manage to escape from the spider. So she's just, she's just gonna stand there. She is going to perform her holdout pistol attack by rolling one die. And it's a five, which is a critical hit. I think that would be pretty wasteful to assign that hit to the spider, which has no defense. So I'm actually assigning that hit to the Night Terror. And you can do that. That's that's a mechanic that's unique to Shadows, which is you can roll for your hit and then assign damage to any monster that you so wish. In this case, we'll be assigning the damage to the Night Terror. So let's roll for damage now. Let's roll high. Okay, so that's a five. With the Dirty Fighting ability, so that's a six. And then with our dark stone bullets, that's seven damage going through to the Night Terror. The Night Terror already has three damage, so it is now at 10 wounds. And it has 12 health, so two more to go. As a result of doing seven damage to the Night Terror, B is going to get 7 times 5, 35 plus 10, 45 XP. It is now the turn of the Night Terror, who has initiative of 3. And the Night Terror will continue to attack Chase 
because it is locked on to chase. So it will roll for its attack, which is four combat dice and a hit upon five or higher. All right, we have two hits. Let's see if we can defend against them. Rolling the two. And we rolled a six. So we've successfully defended one of the attacks with Chase's defense of four. But this attack does go through and Chase is going to take four damage. So Chase takes that amount of damage from being hit once. And with that, he's actually at health of 16. I mean, um, damage of 16, 16 wounds, and he has health of 19. Chase's turn now, obviously he needs, he wants revenge. So he's going to go ahead and attack the Night Terror. But before he does that, he's starting his turn on the same map tile as Night Terror. So of course he's going to see if he needs to take the horror hits. So two hits and let's roll for defense. To defend against this, he needs five or higher. And he successfully defended against one of that. So he's going to take one sanity damage, which isn't too bad. Now he's going to take his turn by attacking the Night Terror. And of course he will use his two pistols, which is the judge and the regular pistol. All right, you can see that I have a third D8 now. So we've got a five, which is a hit, but not a crit. Uh, this is a six, which is a critical hit and a four, which is nothing, a miss. So that's two hits there. And then look at that. We've got double sixes, which is a uh, criticals. So, wow, sharpshooter. We've got three critical hits and one regular hit. Let's see how we can assign the damage. The first crit is going to the Night Terror. Let's roll for damage. One. And that's okay, because remember, we have Darkstone bullets. So that's actually a damage of two, and that would be enough to kill off the Night Terror, who only has two health left. So Bravo, let's calculate our experience points. Uh, it's gonna be 20 XP for killing off, two, for, for delivering the two damage. The second critical hit is going to, it doesn't really matter, I guess, is going to the spider that's right behind him. Let's roll for damage. Six. No issues there. Six is definitely going to kill that spider. And that would give him 10 XP. Finally, we have a third crit. And a regular hit. So, well, the regular hit is actually going to go this five. The regular hit is going to go kill off that spider that's next to Chase. So regardless of what we roll, it's going to be at least a two, which is... This spider only needed one more hit to be uh, defeated, so that's gone. Ten, 10 more XP to chase, and he has one more crit to assign with this D6, uh, D8. But his range is six, so can he hit the spider? I don't think he can. The spider is just out of his line of sight, so as you can see, Let's see. I don't know, this is a really tight shot. I don't think we can hit the spider without touching some walls, scraping by. Yeah, it probably is too tight. Yeah, I, I, yeah, it won't work. So unfortunately, that crit does not do anything. Um, and that would be all for Chase's turn. And I just realized we didn't roll for his, his movement. That's okay. And let's not forget that Chase has an ability which allows him, allows him to roll d6 after he kills an enemy. And if he gets 
five or six, he gets a grip back. So, he, what, how many did he kill? He killed off the Night Terror and two spiders. He gets to roll three dice. And wow, look at that, two fives. He gets two crits. Luckily, his max grit is now three. So, he's now his max. That was a pretty good turn for Chase and B. They successfully defeated all of the monsters but one. So let's go ahead and finish off the spider by moving on to the next turn. First, we're gonna roll for holding back the darkness. Six and a one, still good. That's a seven. The spider is going to activate attacking B. Four or higher, so that's two hits. Let's defend. We need three or higher. One defended, two damage going through. Next, B is going to roll for movement first. Let's not forget that. For B, two. Uh, I'm gonna try to escape the spider. We need a four higher. And it bounds, but that's a three. So unfortunately, we didn't escape. B's gonna attack the spider with her hold up pistol. One shot. We, need, we needed a four or higher, didn't work. So nothing happens, I guess. Unless we want to use a grit to reroll that. I don't know, she's pretty weak on her attacks. All right, we'll spend a grit. She only has two, so we have one left. Let's reroll. We got a two, unfortunately that didn't do anything. So her attack was a miss. And that's all, I think she, that's all she could do. She is going to use herbs on uh, Chase. Here's a quick reference. Herbs token discard to heal two d6 wounds. Let's roll. Nice, uh, five and a four, that's nine wounds. Pretty good, pretty good. He goes from 16 to seven. And B gets 10 XP just for healing. 7, 60. Next is Chase. He's going to move first. A 4. He needs to get line of sight to that spider. So this should do. Just one move. And now he will attack. Uh, quite a bit of hits there. Actually, he needs to roll five or higher. Miss, miss, miss. That's a critical, and that's a miss. So we have one crit. Let's roll for damage. Come on. Four. Four is awesome, because four is enough to kill off that spider. And there you go. Ten more XP going to Chase. He's at 520. And he also rolls a d6 to see whether he gets a grit. He rolled a one, so no, no grit from defeating the enemy. And that would conclude the fight. Since we are at the end of the fight now, we get to recover, uh, I guess, catch our breath. And the first thing we do is we can roll a d3 to see how much, how much health we, and or, and or sanity we heal up. Red is B, white is Chase. And white is Chase, so Chase gets to heal three. That's a three, and that's a one. B gets to heal one. B is gonna heal up her health. Chase, I think he'll up, heal up one sanity and two health. Next, we get to draw some loot because there are two threat cards. We get to draw two loot cards each. So let's see what we get for our heroes. This is for B, and she gets coins and dark stone shard, one of it. And Chase, he gets this, which is one dark stone shard and fifty dollars. Well, not very generous, but it is what it is. That fight took quite a while and we only got, you know, a bit of money and a dark stone shard each. 
But let's record also the XP. That's four XP for, for each hero. Now we move on to our new turn. Let's see if we can hold back darkness. Four and a four. Okay, so hold on because we've rolled doubles, double twos. When we roll doubles, bad stuff happen unless you roll double sixes. So let's consult the depth event chart. Because we rolled double fours, there was falling rubble. The rocky ceiling of the mine shaft is unstable and prone to collapse. Great. Each hero in the mine immediately takes d6 hits. Okay. White is chase. And actually, they both rolled twos. So they'll each take two hits. Let's do our saves. Five and the three. Wow, very nice. Five is actually a block on Chase's part, and three is also a block on Saloon Girl B's part because her defense is three and his defense is four. Very, very nice. So we actually don't... Actually, that's one of the hits. They each took two hits. That was the first hit. Let's roll for the second hit. Let's see if, we, if they can block the second hit. Uh, unfortunately, no. So they'll still take one wound each, but it's not as bad as two hits. Okay, we don't have to move up the depth track, the marker, darkness marker. So let's begin our turn with B. Let's roll for a movement. Two is no good, that's very slow. But one, two, three, she gets to move, plus one move, because of her ability, her fast ability. So she'll, she'll stand there. And I guess she could scavenge. No, I don't think she'll scavenge. All right, she's just gonna stand there. Just, you know, talk to Chase about the fight, do a little bit of a debrief. And then Chase will go, he'll roll for his movement. Ah, also a two. Well, that's pretty good because Chase actually re recovers grit on a row of two. And he's actually at his max grit, so he will spend the grit that he just got to roll an additional movement die. And it's a one. Wow. <laughs> okay, so in total, he's going to move three, and he has plus one from his boots, so he's, he'll get to move four. One, two, three, four. Not quite there, but very close. Roll back to darkness. I mean, hold back to darkness. Aha, look at this. I love this. Double sixes. Double sixes. Stubborn resolve. This place is horrible and unforgiving, but you're not about to give up without a fight. Each hero may immediately heal d6 wounds slash sanity or recover one grit. And I guess we'll you know, roll for healing for both characters. So B gets to heal four and she's two. She's gonna heal up her health from seven down to three. And he gets to heal up two. So let's just do one of each. Movement for B, three. So that's four. One, two, three, four. And chase a three. To so go one. Uh, he can see through the portal. Standing at the edge of the portal, Chase can now see to the other side. Basically, it looks through the portal to see what's on the other side. He doesn't need to move through it just yet, though. Here's the other side of the portal. And we are going to draw from the map deck of the other world to see what's across. Normally, if you have more other worlds in the game through expansions or Kickstarter bonuses and such, you have to go to your world card, world deck, I guess, uh, and draw one to see which other world the portal leads into. But this core set only comes with one other world, so there's no point drawing. We will be heading into the Targa Plateau. And so here's my map deck for the Targa Plateau. And this 
of the world has uh, an overall effect, an environmental effect that affects all players. In the target plateau, because of frigid snow, move rolls of one do a one automatic wound to a hero with no defense roll. So it's just harsh weather, it's really cold, you're really, if you're, if you're moving slowly, you're gonna take some wounds. But heroes recover a grit on the move roll of one or two. So it's easier to get grit, but it's more dangerous now moving slowly. Let's draw the map. And the first thing we get is a long passage. How eventful. We don't get an exploration token for that because it's not like a room tile. So I think I will call it a night here. Uh, just to keep the video, you know, short and sweet. But in our next episode, we're going to venture into this portal. Hopefully we'll start moving so slowly and uh, let's get some action going. Stay tuned and I'll see you guys next time.